All right. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. It says oh. how to host an online event. Perfect. Awesome. So um, since it's a pretty intimate group setting, I'm just going to talk pretty casually to you both. If you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty flexible in terms of we don't have to wait till the very end of this presentation. Um, but feel free to interrupt me if you have any specific questions. Are we the only ones joining you? Um, I, I don't know. I think it might be. I should also just put up the participants uh, for just in case someone comes in late. The previous um, attendees, it's been pretty small. So like at most we've had five people. Wow. Um, I don't know if it's because it's a Zoom meeting and not a uh, on like Facebook Live, that could also be. Um, I know when I do uh, other workshops with other libraries, it's usually on their social media platform. Mm -hmm. And I usually get like hundreds of people, but yeah. um, I think it might be because it's like a Zoom meeting, it might be a little bit different. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. All right. so. Typically when I have these webinars, which is better because it's an intimate setting, I can kind of like curate um, any particular conversation specific to your needs. Um, I usually break it down into three parts. So I always, always recommend brainstorming, logistics and execution. Okay. So I usually dive into brainstorming first because I think this is really important to identify exactly how you're going to host an online event. Um, and I always recommend answering some prompts before you get started so that way you're not overwhelmed um, with trying to figure out the ins and outs of hosting an online event, right? So some questions I always recommend is trying to figure out if you're trying to host an online event for family. A lot of people like to use online events as a way to do gathering, family gatherings. That's the way I use it. Oh, okay, good, good, good. How, how is it um, so far for you? Is it working okay? Well, the the only time that i was the original host of the meeting for some reason they were telling me other people that were in the gathering were telling me that there were people in the waiting room but i couldn't see a waiting room and i couldn't see them to let them in so that was a, a logistical problem a, an execution problem okay that's actually pretty helpful because I, what i can tell you right now so i'm assuming this is on zoom right when you yes, were, this was okay. a Zoom thing i was doing so just so you are aware so i don't know if you can see me moving at this bar up here can you see me moving this bar no no, no? okay um let's see here um how I can describe it. So typically when you start a Zoom meeting, you'll see, and you're the host, you usually will see a bar that says next to your microphone video, it will say security and then it'll say participants. Um, if you're the host, all you need to do is just click on participants. Mm -hmm. And then when you click on participants, as people come in, you'll see a waiting room above, um, with names of people who are waiting to enter the room above the names that are, pe that are um, of people who are already in the, in the Zoom meeting. So it's just it's essentially you'll see the waiting room in the participants tab. Now, if you're that's only if you're the host. Only if you are the host, you can see the waiting room. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. And the thing is, when you are sharing your screen, like I'm sharing my screen right now, yeah. um, it's actually a little bit harder to see your waiting room and to see the participants. So something that I recommend is after you share your screen to just click on participants, because then you'll be able to see the list of people that are in your meeting or in your event. And then you can actually see the waiting room. Because usually when you share your screen, everything is hidden. In. So it's hard to see right. the chat. It's hard to see the, the waiting room. So I always recommend just doing that. Okay. Um, great questions. And then something that uh, I also like to ask uh, people is if you're hosting an online event for your business. So sometimes I get business owners um, and they're trying to figure out how to host an online event for their business. So once you are able to identify how you're trying to host an event, um, 
it's trying to figure out like now what platform you're going to use, right? So it seems like for you, Judith, you typically use Zoom, which is great. Sometimes people like to use Google Meet. Sometimes people like to use other platforms to have everyone come together on a video call. Um, so Google Meet is like a pretty free platform that is okay to use. Um, I know that they've been working on a lot of features to improve it to compete with Zoom. Zoom, I believe, is free, but only gives you a limited amount of time. So if you are going to use Zoom, just keep that in mind because if you say, for example, want to exceed 45 minutes, I believe you have to have a paid version. Mm -hmm. So if, if you are trying to host an online event um, and not have a time limit, Google Meet is a good free alternative because they don't cap it at any point in time. And if you use GCAL, which is Google Calendar, sometimes they'll add a Google Meet link automatically for you. Um, it's just a button and they'll uh, provide you with that Google Meet link. Okay, I can check in out Google Meet and see if that meets my needs as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really helpful. Um, and if you use Google Calendar on a day-to-day -day basis, I highly recommend that. All right, so I'm not going to go into why online events are important, but I will touch on um, the fact that, say, for example, um, I'm not sure if anyone here is interested in changing careers or looking for a job, but what's really important when it comes to hosting online events is being able to utilize your technology. So being able to understand how to use technology can be an actual critical step critical skill in not only your personal life, but also in career. So if being able to um, manage that while you're working from home is something that's really, really uh, important. Now, when it comes to brainstorming, something that I highly, highly suggest is understanding the differences between the three different question prompts that we had in the previous slide. So understanding the difference between having a, an event for your family, having an event for business, or having an event for um, your, uh, for your uh, work, right? And then understanding the type of platform that specifically works for not only yourself, but also for your um, attendees, right? So sometimes people struggle with knowing how to use Zoom. But if you know that everyone used Google Calendar or Gmail, then maybe that's a great alternative that's easy to understand for every single party. Now, something that I highly suggest is prepping for your event as almost is if it's in person. And what I mean by that is focus a lot on like advertising and making sure that everyone knows how to access the online event. Some, th some issue that I hear all the time from individuals that contact me is not sure, not, not understanding why that sometimes links get um, links are not working or why it's harder to enter into a Zoom meeting or, you know, the time is wrong um, or maybe they've accidentally given the wrong link or what to do in that situation. Uh, I always recommend just making sure you have a Google Doc where you list out what the link is for the event and you know that you tested and tried it. Um, you've advertised it, whether it's formally or informally, which means that you've sent out that specific link to everyone that needs to be involved in, in the um, actual online event. So from a like business standpoint, if you're trying to recruit people, I always recommend Facebook as a good way to market um, your online event. Uh, so all social medias, so you know, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, if you can. If it's a family event, sometimes what I hear is the concern of privacy, right? You, some people are worried about their event getting hacked or, um, you know, strangers hopping into the event. So something you can do is to just add a passcode in it and make sure you share that passcode with your family members or the people that you want to be attending the event. Does Google Meet have a passcode? So the Google Meet does not have a passcode because you are specifically sharing the link via email. So you're only sharing the link with the people you send that email uh, email to. 
So it's in the form of a Google Calendar invite. And I can even show you too right now what it looks like. Uh, let's see here. All right, so for example, we have, say for example, we're trying to set up a, an event on Saturday, the 23rd. So what we want to do is hit the time frame, or you can even hit create, um, and see at this button right here, it says add Google Meet video conference. So if you click that, Google will immediately include a link. And the only way people can see this link is if you add guests, which should be like emails, right? So the only person who can have this link, unless obviously it's been shared to other people, external people, are the people in this email. So you can exit, you can um, change the guest permissions so you can allow whether or not other people that you add to this GCAL invite can invite other people. Right, um, but see how easy it is. You don't even have to think about creating an official event through Zoom. All you have to do is you click the button and it gives you a link. And when you save it, you click on it and you can hit on join Google Meet. And you hit, uh, it's not gonna let me use the camera because I'm using it for Zoom. But if you just hit join now, then you're in. So super easy. Um, we don't. It, you don't really have to do a lot of work, which is it's free. Um, so I always recommend this as an alternative. Now I will say the quality of the video could be dependent upon your internet connection. It's not as smooth as sometimes Zoom maybe, but it's pretty competitive in terms of the quality. All right. Um, so we're going to talk about logistics now, and you might be thinking, all right, what are the actual steps in order for me to successfully host an online event, right? So I always think, uh, inform clients of thinking about the basics. So the date, the time, and because it's an online event, you have to think about what type of hosting platform and how long you want this event to be, right? So very similar to in-person events, but the, the only difference is, is that you're going to need to do a little bit more work in terms of promoting and making sure that everyone has the right link to attend the event. Because the biggest issue I hear all the time is that people send out the wrong link or maybe um, um, one person said that they got a different link, but the other person got a different link, and that's where the confusion lies. Um, I will show you how to make sure that you're scheduling and cr creating one, one link for um, your event um, after this, uh, but that's something I recommend thinking about. So now what, what else do you need to think about when you're hosting an online event, right? The thing is, is that with everyone being online, there's people who are getting tired of being on Zoom, uh, right? Like people are just not up for being online. So what I always recommend is think about how far in advance you want to um, start promoting your event or how how far into the future do you want to uh, host your event? And think about how long you want to promote it. I always recommend if you promote your event at least a week and a half out, you usually will see a higher increase of engagement and you'll see that people are more likely to remember and put it in their calendar. Now, when I'm speaking, throughout the slides, I'm usually coming from like a business or like a work standpoint. From a family standpoint, I would probably say that unless it's like a very formal event, like a baby shower or a wedding celebration or something super formal, um, I still think that for formal events, you should still promote it as far in advance as you can. But if it's just super casual, I would say, um, 
honestly, th- what I find works really best for clients is um, at least a couple of days before and then reminding them the day before the event and then the morning of the event. So it's pretty, uh, pretty engaging. Now, if you're ch- someone who's you know, your job is to start hosting online events and you're freaking out because you're not exactly sure what is required of you. Um, Just know that advertising is a really big part of making sure you have a successful online event. Um, So think about how much advertising you'll need to invest your time and then potentially your money in depending upon if you are the business owner. All right, so what else do you need for event, right? We got the basics down. We, we started talking about the marketing and advertising. Now, the biggest thing that ends up happening, say, for example, you've promoted it, you've gotten some traction, you're excited. Um, well, thing is, is that one of the things I also see when people start hosting events and they run into an issue with is the fact that they spent all this time with the prep, but then when the event actually happens, there's no like structure to it. They don't know what to do. And the thing is, in order to keep engagement, to keep people wanting to come back and respect your time and you respect their time, you want to have a successful engaging event is by having an itinerary. If you can have a structure for your online event, even if it's just an outline of what you want to see happen, which doesn't necessarily mean that you have to stick with it. It's just good to have some idea of what you want to achieve in your event, even if it's a family event, right? Maybe you want to go around and have people talk about what they've been up to, any changes in their life. Um, From a business or professional standpoint, having a good structure to ensure that people stay on during the event is really important. And what's going to happen is the more that you're able to keep people engaged, the more likely you'll see a, um, more people attend in future events down the line, right? So it's important from, a, from most perspectives to just have a, a good idea of what you want to see and using whether it's a Google Doc, Microsoft document, just bullet pointing out what you want to see, how much time you want to allocate for each section, right? And just making sure that um, you're able to follow through with that. Even if you don't follow through with it, at least use it as a guide for yourself. Um, Because the thing is, the reason why people get, you know, Um, tired of going on Zoom is because so many people feel that sometimes when there's a Zoom meeting, it could be done through email, it could be done on a phone call, it could be done through text or whatever. So what's the, what the most important thing you need to do is provide value during your event. So if you can narrow down what your objective is for this event and relay that through your structure and your itinerary, you'll have a very successful event because now people realize that there's value to this, right? And people are more likely to come back to any event if they feel that they're getting some sort of value. Even from like a family perspective, right? Um, If they find that they're having fun, they're engaging, it's really nice to catch up with family members, then you'll start to continue to see an increase of engagement because they felt good during that event, right? During that gathering, during that formal event, et cetera. All right, now the next thing I wanna talk about is how do you want your event to look like? And have you thought from a business or professional standpoint, have you thought about the artwork for social media? So oftentimes I work with a lot of business owners or professionals that are not sure what steps to take when it comes to hosting an online event. And they didn't realize how much time and effort it takes to really host a successful event. And they didn't realize that there's a lot of advertising and maybe even graphic artwork that they have to do. So the thing is, is that when you are trying to approach hosting an online event for you know, business or professional needs, just know that everything has to look consistent. Everything has to look on brand and you wanna make sure that it looks professional, obviously, if you're doing it for business and or for work. If you are hosting an event for family, what could 
the way that you could look at it is um, adding some creativity to it, adding some fun, because again, you know, um, a lot of people are getting tired of Zoom or, you know, video chat, but if there's a way you can make it super exciting, super fun by adding some nice pictures, some nice artwork on attached to your event, that's going to increase excitement and that's going to get people to want to invest their time because they see that you're investing your time. All right, so we already talked about what platforms are you going to use to promote your uh, to use to have your event, but also we need to talk about what platforms you're going to use to promote your event. So I mentioned a few already. Social media platforms are a big thing. Um, if you are doing it for professional or business needs, um, Eventbrite is a really good uh support supportive platform to promote your event for free so long as you're not um accepting money uh if you accept money on that platform or you're charging a ticket then they take a percentage from the sales that you have um and then when it comes to promoting your event, I would probably say from a business or professional standpoint, if you can promote your event minimum a month out and then remind them um, two weeks out, then a week and a half out, and then a couple of days uh, before as a reminder, the day before the event and the morning of, right? So you really need to be able to continue that traction. If it's just for family, like I mentioned already, um, if you could do it a week and a half out, then reminder the day before, then morning of, that's always good. And the reason for this is because there is just so many online virtual events nowadays, it's important to just give a friendly reminder to your attendees, to the people you want to show up to your event, it's important to be able to utilize these social media platforms because uh, you can't really post out po uh, put out posters as much anymore. Um, but even then, since it's a virtual uh, event, it makes more sense for you to uh, promote it online. And what you can also do is create um, a an event on your social media platforms um, and invite your friends or family to attend that event on there and then just provide the the meeting link in the description of that event so you can create events on facebook you can create events on um, linkedin uh, there's so many ways you can create events all right so make sure that you are remembering what what platform you're using to host an online event, right? So are you using Zoom? Are you using Google Hangout or Google Meet, right? Facebook Live is a big thing. I see so many people going on Facebook Live and this is a new feature that has been more popular as of date. And it's a great way if you're doing it on a business professional standpoint. Now make sure you've already completed figuring out the date, having the time, don't forget the duration, right? Um, and then the biggest thing is, are you going to have a moderator or host, right? If you're going to have a moderator or a host, which ideally should be the person who is producing this event because they know the ins and outs of the event and the person creating the itinerary, um, it's important to understand is that you, for any successful event, you need someone as a host or a moderator to keep people engaged, people to keep people um, on track, right? It's important for you to have some sort of leadership figure in the event, whether it's informal or formal, to help keep things moving or help keep things on track. And then don't forget to ask yourself, how are you going to promote your event? So these are all the questions that you pretty much should already have answered in order to make sure that your event is going to be successful. All right, now let's talk about execution. So we've already thought about brainstorming, right? Like how are we gonna think about an online event? We've talked about logistics, what things, specific things you need to think about in order to host a successful event and to make sure the word gets out from both an informal and formal setting. Now let's talk about the actual execution. So what's going to happen when you start to hit start meeting or start Google Meet or you start bring people in. 
So first things first, I always recommend testing the link with a friend or family member way before you um, send this out, right? Because you want to make sure that the link that you're using is um, working and it's the right link for everyone to utilize. Now, the next thing is to create or get that social media artwork to promote your online event. So whether you need to make it yourself or you need to hire someone to have a flyer or online poster or social media artwork to promote it, make sure you have that ready because then what's going to happen is anytime someone sees this flyer, they know what it's about, right? And if it's for an informal family event, what you could do is a similar fashion, use a similar strategy, but it could be a lot more fun and informal. And make sure that the date and time is in your calendar. And make sure as well that if you are inviting people who are not necessarily in the same time zone as you, you can make sure that you have to make sure that time is um, specific to your time zone and relay that that time is specific to your time zone, right? So for example, we're on ET time. So if I were to produce an event, I would make sure that I announce that this event is happening at 5 p.m. ET, which is a different time PT. And if you are trying to attract people from around the country, then you might need to consider including the time zone in your announcement so that way people know when to hop on. All right, and so the biggest thing that is going to help you make sure that you get attendees is promoting, promoting, promoting. So for example, um, I am currently hosting a, a program through my business that helps job seekers. And um, I ended up promoting it on LinkedIn and all social medias. And we got a huge number of registrants, close to 100 registrants, just from promoting it in one week, right? That is a good way to utilize social media and understand the importance of promoting your event. Now, obviously, when it comes to family or informal stuff, I highly suggest just making sure you have a group chat or an email um, an email chain going on with the people that you want in that meeting or in that event and they and, and let them know and send them reminders, right? Um, from a business or professional standpoint, what's important is that people won't show up if they are not reminded that there is an important event that they need to show up to, right? People do want to show up. Obviously, there are some factors to it, like whether or not it's valuable to them, whether they feel like it's a, um, a good use of their time. It's important to be able to make a good first impression. And the best way to do that, to do that is to promote as much as you possibly can to gain traction, to get attention from people, and to continue to remind them that, hey, this is an event that I am hosting, and I would appreciate it if you attended. All right, and like I mentioned already, you do you want to send reminders and email reminders because it's so important to just send that email really quickly because you never know if people are too caught up in their work, if they're caught up in their day with everything that's going on, things are so uncertain. And so it's always just helpful to send a reminder. And if you can, if you can share your itinerary or your structure for the event, that's also another incentive for people to show up. And the reason for this is because people really do want to know why they should be attending, why it's worth their time, why it's worth their attention, right? So if you're able to sum up what the objective is for the event or why you have decided to pursue creating this event and you're promoting it on your platforms, that's a great way for people to read it and say, okay, yeah, I definitely want to learn more. I, I Or yes, I definitely want to catch up with my, my family members, et cetera, et cetera. All right, I have some final notes here um, that I just wanna quickly go over. 
I will say online events have gotten so, so popular and it's a great alternative for large in-person events that you might not be able to host in person, right? With everything that's going on, online events have skyrocketed and that's one of the reasons why Zoom is, you know, has grown so successfully because everyone decided that Zoom is a platform to use and invest in. Um, it's important for you to realize that online events might not actually um, go away forever, right? It might be a good alternative because you might be able to connect with people who may have moved, who are now no longer um, in you know, nearby, maybe they live in a different state, maybe they live in a different country. It's a great way for you to connect with people worldwide. It's also good from a career professional standpoint because if you don't know how to use Zoom, if you don't know how to attach your webcam or your microphone, that could be detrimental to your career because a lot of companies nowadays expect that you know how to use this and you know how to use the platform. So it's always good to practice and to just get better at using the technology. Um, technology is constantly being innovated and um, unfortunately, we just have to keep up with the trends with technology, especially with everyone online now. So it's always just good to keep that in mind. Understanding what platform you plan on using is very important and making sure you communicate that to your audience will make sure that you have a successful event. And even though you start brainstorming, you start uh, strategizing, it's always important to execute and follow through. If you don't follow through with your tasks of defining a date, a defining a duration, a time, what platform you want to use, how you're going to promote it, how you're going to inform people, then it's not going to be a successful event. You're not going to see the results you'd like to see, right? So and everything that you can do in the prep work is going to ultimately be beneficial in the long run for for how you are, however you want to use online events for. All right, and so that's all I have for um, online events today. Um, I'm just going to open it up to questions. I don't know if Judith or Lori, you have any particular questions about online events or maybe questions about Zoom platform. No, I think uh, you answered my questions before you. It was a very good presentation. Thank you very much. Of course. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Oh, perfect. And I'll actually show you guys one more thing. Um, can you see this Zoom right here? It says, thank you. I see a screen that says, thank you with your business and personal. Okay, so let me see if I can change the screen that I'm sharing. I've learned already. You have to unshare and reshare. <laughs> yep. Um, let me see here. Can you see the? Do you see like five twenty nine on my screen? No, I do not see five twenty nine. I still see the the thank you screen that you had shared before. Okay. I guess it's not sharing the Zoom um, that I wanted to share. I think it's because I'm already on here, but ultimately um, I'm just going to kind of explain how to schedule so that way you have a dedicated link. Um, when you open up Zoom, if you have it on your computer, it should show up as an app and it should usually come up with a screen that says your time and if you have any upcoming meetings. Now, one of the buttons is schedule. If you're logged onto Zoom on your web browser, it will um, look a little bit differently, um, but all you have to do is just find the button that says schedule. Now, what you want to do is make it a recurring meeting. So say, for example, you have a frequently family gathering that happens every quarter. Um, if you hit recurring meeting and you create a recurring meeting, this can be a, ver a dedicated Zoom link specifically to your attendees. So anytime you are having this meeting, you're using the same link and you're not having to change or create a new meeting every single time. So um, it's going to ask you if you want a passcode and a waiting room. Now, Judith, if you, if you don't like the waiting room, you can take it off. The only thing that Zoom asks is you have either the passcode or the waiting room. You can have both, but you can't 
um, not have uh, either one. So you can change it to passcode. So when you send out your links, um, you just include that passcode and then there's no one in the waiting room. You don't have to worry about, you know, checking the waiting room. Uh, as long as people have the passcode, they can enter. Um, and then the thing with this too, what's really cool is with Zoom, you can also have people register through Zoom. Now that requires some doing it on your web browser, but if you have any particular questions about that, you can always reach out to me personally. So okay. that's the one thing I just wanted to share, but thank you so, so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night.